In this episode, I'm going to show you how I created this concrete LED ping pong table in the middle of the desert. I'm building this ping pong table out at Ben Ueda's container house, which is right behind me over there. So the soil at the build site isn't so sturdy and it's definitely not level ground. So what I've done here is built some two by six forms that I'm going to use to build up some concrete slabs. And I'm just going to use some rapid setting concrete to pour those now. That'll provide a nice level surface for the concrete ping pong table to rest on. This project was made during the first Thanksgiving event in Joshua Tree, California. The concept was a freeform event where a dozen or so of your favorite YouTube makers got together and made things in the same place. So you'll see a lot of familiar faces in the video. That's Mike Montgomery from Modern Builds and Johnny Lambert from Johnny Builds helping me pour the last slab there. We left the slabs to cure and headed back to Ben's house to make the melamine forms for the tabletop. By the way, the container house where I was just at is an Airbnb, so most of the making took place where I am now, which is Maker Ranch. The forms for the tabletop are really simple 4x4 melamine boxes, which are two and a quarter inches deep. Regulation ping pong tables are nine feet by five feet, but I decided to make mine eight by four so it'd be a bit more manageable. This way I could make the top from two 4x4 slabs and keep the weight under a thousand pounds. After using drywall screws to secure the sides of the form, it was getting dark, so I decided to finish them up the next day. All right, so there is a lot going on in Maker Ranch, so we're getting a little creative. Over here, we got Mike Montgomery, Kyle Toth doing some wood turning. We got Ben Paik from Wobie Design, he's filming them. We're gonna have to do our caulking on our form vertically right here because, well, there's just no space, but we're gonna make it work. I started by applying a layer of paste wax to the form, which will prevent excess silicone from sticking to the form. I then laid down a generous bead of 100% silicone caulk over all the seam and ran a metal fondant ball tool over the caulk lines. The fondant tool pushes excess caulk to the sides to leave a clean line over the seam. And as you'll see in a moment, the layer of paste wax will make it easy to peel the excess caulk away, leaving that perfect caulk line. While the caulk cured, I grabbed a few pieces of rebar to make reinforcing structures for the concrete tops. I cut the rebar to rough length with an angle grinder and then laid the rebar out in a grid arrangement. The rebar shape doesn't need to be very precise since it will be buried in the concrete. I could have used rebar wire ties to tie the rebar pieces together, but I decided to go ahead and weld the rebar structure. I knew I'd be welding the base for the ping pong table and I hadn't picked up a welder in over a year. So I figured this would be good practice before starting on the base. That's dumb. All right, so it's kind of late at night. We got the whole crew over here. We moved over to the container house and we're going to bust out this concrete pour so we can get this project done. I forgot to remove the excess caulk before we came over to the container house, so I took care of that now. And then we could get on to the pour. The process here was basically the same as for the ground slabs. Mix, pour, and screed with 2x4s to level the top. We waited until the forms were about 3 quarters full before adding the rebar structures. This provided some wiggle room so that the rebar could sink into the wet concrete a bit without risking having it hit the bottom of the form, which means it would show through on the top, and we don't want that. Today we're back here at Maker Ranch and it's time to weld up the steel base for the ping pong table. I'm just going to be using this one and a half inch tube steel. My first time ever working with metal of this size. Should be fun. Let's get to it. To cut the steel tube, I'm just using a metal chop saw. 
I really took my time here to cut the pieces accurately, and this paid off later by making it easier to get all the pieces squared up for welding. We've got all the pieces of steel cut to length. We're just gonna go back with an angle grinder and clean off all these little burrs and whatnot that are left on the end from the metal cutoff. Those are important to clean up just so we can get a cleaner surface to weld against. So I mentioned that I hadn't welded anything in a year, but I didn't mention that my experience a year ago was actually my only experience welding. So I was basically back to square one. Fortunately, I had Eric from Cutworks there, who's an expert welder, to give me a crash course. I started by tack welding the corners of each joint, which holds the structure together, but still allows you to adjust anything that's slightly out of square. I could then come back and run a full bead across each seam. Now I took my time here and went slow, so I was working late into the night. Around midnight, I decided it would be best to just call it a night and finish the base the next morning. And we rolling. Flipping this? Yes. Just flip it upside down. As I was wrapping up, Kyle Toth walked up, and since he'd never welded, we thought it would be fun to see if the student could become the teacher. Okay. So the goal is basically straight line slow, probably about like that speed. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> Natural. <laughs> so I just realized I'm going to need something between these middle two cross braces to support the LEDs if I'm going to have up lighting underneath the net. So I just took this angle iron and off camera I welded it in between there and that should do a good job. That evening after finishing the base, I decided to have some fun with the ping pong paddles that I purchased and feed my hydro dipping addiction. So hydro dipping takes a bit of practice to get right, but Magic Marble makes it pretty easy. Prime the surface, fill a bucket with water, drop paint onto the water, swirl the paint, and then slowly dip. If you saw my guitar hydro dipping video, you know I can get a little bit obsessive about this. And I'll just say that these are okay, but I didn't have time to redip here. The next day, we loaded up the trucks and headed back to the container house to install the table. Upon arrival, the first order of business was painting the steel base. I used a Rust-Oleum Rusty Metal Primer as a rust preventative measure and then hit it a couple times with coats of flat white spray paint. So while I'm painting the base, let me take a minute and tell you about my first threesome. It started hot and it ended cool. Wait, what's that? You thought I, you thought I, no, 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 no. I'm talking about the shave threesome from this video sponsor, Billy Jealousy. The shave threesome starts with the hot towel heating pre-shave. When its unique water-activated heating agent comes in contact with water, it heats up to lift and soften your facial hair, enabling a close and comfortable shave that's just like you get at the barber shop. Next up in the threesome, but certainly not a sloppy second, is the Hydroplane Shave Cream. This foamless cream just works. No nicks, no pain, just a smooth shave. And closing the deal on the threesome is the Shaved Ice Aftershave. It includes aloe to cool your skin and restore pH balance, and allantoin. No idea if I'm pronouncing that right, but I do know that it counteracts shaving irritation, and it definitely works for me. So that brings me to the question. Is it a time for you to try a threesome? Right now, Billy Jealousy is offering all my viewers 20% off their entire purchase. Just use the code MEDUSTRIAL via the link in the description below. Thanks to Billy Jealousy for supporting this channel, and of course for giving me the opportunity to try a threesome. Without further ado, let's get back to the build. We moved the base into place on the slabs and then got ready for the scariest part of this build, moving the two 400 pound slabs of concrete into place. 
It was daunting enough that I kind of forgot to turn on the camera while removing the slabs from the melamine form, so sorry about that. But if you've watched any of my dozen or so other concrete videos, you've seen this process a few times. I hope you'll find it in your heart to forgive me. With a team of four, we finagled the tops onto the steel base, and then it was time to turn my attention to the net and LED lighting. Ben has been experimenting with polycarbonate and had some extra lying around. I decided that it would be the perfect material for the net. Polycarbonate cuts easily with a circular saw, makes a great LED diffuser, and would hold up to anything the Joshua Tree weather might throw at it. To make the table more usable at night, I'm going to add some LED lighting. On the underside of the table, I'm just going to use these aluminum LED channels, and I'm going to attach those with some construction adhesive to the steel base. They sell corner connectors for these aluminum channels, but they're often more expensive than the channels themselves. For an outdoor under table install, Cutting rough miners in the channels with an angle grinder gives a nice clean look and the price is certainly right. I initially used the adhesive backing on the back of the LED strips to secure them inside the LED channel. However, this adhesive backing is really prone to failure over the long term or even short term and so I came back off camera and used some clear silicone caulk to secure it more permanently. I went with LED channels that had a smoke gray diffuser because I think the smoke gray kind of blends in with the concrete and gives it a sleeker modern look. With all the LEDs installed, I could hook up the two LED controllers and plug it in to give it a quick test. All right, we're testing out the uh, Music Reactive LED ping pong net. With everything complete on the last night of the event, it was time for some epic maker ping pong battles. project and Makesgiving were just a ton of fun. If you like this project, I've got a bunch of other concrete projects in that playlist right up there. Make sure to hit the subscribe and bell button for future videos. Hit the thumbs up button. That's it for this time, and I'll see you next time. Love is blind and